Hi there, this is Bob with SentryAutoAir.com. Today we are going to reseal a General Motors A6 compressor. We have already removed the clutch uh, to save time for this video. So if you're needing to know how to get that off, look at our other video that shows General Motors uh, clutch repair and disassembly. So to start with, this compressor leaks from the body and the shaft seal. So we're going to begin by tearing it down. The A6 is not a difficult compressor to do as long as you know a couple tricks to reassembly. There are four bolts on the back that retain the rear cylinder head. Gently tap off the back. cylinder head, the oil pump is located right in the back. It may stay on the crank when you pull it. Just keep everything together and note the positions. The next is the valve plate assembly off the back. It will be a little stuck. You can work with it a little bit with a screwdriver. Just don't be excessively brutal with things bending. Just work it a little bit. It'll come off. This is the rear cylinder head seal. And this is the valve plate as the reed plate. There's an oil pump in an A6. They retain their own oil. That is found in the bottom there. That does have to be removed first or you will damage the compressor or the oil pump tube trying to get it apart. Again, there's some needle nose. They sit on an O-ring. They can get pretty stuck. We got the oil pump tube loosened up. It was a little more stuck than normal, but it did come out. It's just a copper tube that goes down into the sump, and there is an O-ring on it. A lot of times they will stay stuck in there. Be sure to get it out. Uh, next is the cartridge to get out. The easiest way is just to simply dump it out. This is the main piston assembly with the another set of reed valves on top. As you can tell it's pretty dark and bad. This compressor is uh, does have a broken piston, but we're just going to use it for the sake of the video. Do not clean this. Um, you can check it. Make sure that you, you can hear the pistons are really worn on that. They should be relatively tight. If everything's clean, just set it aside for assembly later. Trying to clean some of this stuff too much can actually lead to problems. The next is there's another O-ring for the front head and they will also be very stuck in there. And the easiest way is to reach in with a pick and work that O-ring out. Sometimes they will come out in pieces. Next, the front cylinder head will drop through. And now you just have the empty case. Now we have our front cylinder head. We have left the shaft seal in it uh, to this point because it's easier to get out now that the compressor crankshaft is not in the way. First, there's a, a, a snap ring that holds the ceramic portion in. And we will work that out. Quite often, snap ring players will not help because the snap ring is pretty far down in there. And it's just a matter of working the snap ring out. The actual way to remove this is using this tool, which goes down into the ceramic binds and we'll pull it up like that. In this case, the, the carbon followed it out. However, if you do not have this tool, gently take a screwdriver from behind and you can break that ceramic and the whole thing will fall out. Therefore, you do not need those special tools for disassembly. Finally, there is an, another O-ring that sits down in this housing for the shaft seal. That's the complete teardown of the A6 compressor. We're gonna go wash this up and we will show you how to assemble it in the next step. Okay, for reassembly, a couple tricks. Since you may not have the special tools to do an A6 compressor or do this a lot quicker and simpler, there is an O-ring that goes in the nose housing. Put it in now, since there's no crankshaft in the way, you have to fight it. You'll be able to put it in there by hand, kind of squish it down in there. Take your compressor. Uh, a little emery cloth or really fine sandpaper, something clean the shaft up right where that shaft seal rides. So if there's any pitting or scoring, 
the new seal will not leak there. Also make sure there's no lint. Use lint-free rags instead of shop rags. Keep this very clean. Set this on end. The next thing is we will restack our valve plates. Quite often there's witness marks where they were. You can actually only go on one way. One plate down. second plate. Our mark is right there. Once again, this compressor is not very clean inside. It's not in good shape. It's just for video. Next, take your front housing. Set it down onto the actual compressor. It sits on roll pins. It should sit right there. Now you can see we have an exposed groove for our O-rings. Take one of the case O-rings, lubricate it very well, set it into that gap. Make sure it just sits in there. Okay, to assemble the compressor, uh, the best thing to do is take a piece of scrap steel and make a bracket to hang the compressor from a vise. Let gravity do the work for you. It's very easy to cut a seal on these and this is the main reason why most people shy away from doing an A6, but it's not very difficult to do as long as you hang it like this. First thing, take some oil and lubricate all the way around the inside of it so that the O-rings, as you put them in there, have something to slip. Also lubricate the O-ring on the case or on the cartridge of the compressor itself as well. Next thing you do is take the compressor with your housing and your O-ring already on it, held together because if this slips, this O-ring is going to pop out. Reach up through the compressor, letting the weight of the compressor hold itself together very gently start working it around and the compressor itself will drop into the housing. Work it around until you feel it hit the bottom, then you can let go. By pushing the two pieces together, the main housing o-ring will not fall out. Then you will see the hole where the oil pump was will line up with the, with the belly in the compressor for the oil pump reserve. This is your oil pickup tube that we took out in a tear down and a new o-ring. Easiest to set the o-ring down into the compressor first and then slide the tube down into that. It will go all the way down into there. This one was a little hard to get out. I think we're gonna have to coax it in just a little bit. Okay. Next step is our valve plates. Stack them in the reverse order you took them out. There's usually witness marks left on them, but there's also only one way they'll go on. Sometimes got to kind of work them around those roll pins, but they will drop. Next is our oil pump. Hopefully you marked it while taking it apart. I try to put them back in the same positions I took, took them apart in. However, I don't think it would cause an issue if you did get them flipped over. I like to put a little oil on the pump so everything kind of slides together. Next, it's time to install the rear housing O-ring. So again, lubricate it real well with mineral oil. And it has to sit, there is no groove for it. It just has to lay in there problem is it can, if it sits a little off, it can pinch. So I take them and I give them just a little bit of stretch. I don't tug on them real hard, but just enough so that they fill that right out the outer edge as tightly as possible. I have to kind of push it down into there. And then finally the rear cylinder head will go on. Also a little bit of oil around everything. You can't use too much oil. You want everything to slide together without pinching. Get it started on the main and this can be tricky sometimes to get those pins to go up into this rear head. You will have to kind of reach down and wiggle and turn a little bit. This one appears to have dropped right on. Four retaining bolts. Be sure to change all these other little auxiliary O-rings while you have this apart on the blow-off valve and there's a switch in a lot of the 
o-ring under his little switch block off or if you have a switch all those are prone to seep and this is the time to do them want to tighten this down evenly side to side if it binds or doesn't feel like it's compressing stop it may be caught on the roll pins you can easily smash those and make it really difficult to get them back together so take your time work them down I do not have a torque spec for these. I'm sure there's one out there, but I do it by hand. Once they're totally tight, I make sure they're cinched down really tight. Never had a problem with that. You can also take it your 3 8 impact and kind of tap them a little tighter as well. You can see, just go around back and forth as it compresses that o-ring. Okay, next step, I will take this to the bench and we will put the front seal in it. Okay, the final part of this uh, reseal is to install the, the shaft seal. Now, if you remember in our previous part, we already installed the O-ring down in the groove there. You can see now with the crankshaft, there's a lot less space. It makes it much more difficult to get that O-ring in now. It's already in, so the next step, if you're replacing with the original type seal, they were a carbon and ceramic seal, and this is common to many different types of compressors. The carbon is spring-loaded and engages two flats on the crankshaft. There's an O-ring that seals it to the shaft, and the ceramic right there is, allows it to rotate. That's the rotating part of the seal, and it seals on a film of oil. So naturally, you're going to get a little oil flung uh, on the underside of the hood over time. So to install this seal, you can do this without special tools by using screwdrivers and pre-line up where the flats are. However, there is the original special tool to install this. Always wearing latex gloves, never touching that seal like I just did. You engage the seal into the tool and really lubricate up that center o-ring really well as well as on the crankshaft. Very gently set it onto the crank and turn it until you feel it start going down and you will feel it lock into the tabs right there. A little wiggle. That's those tabs I showed, they are now locked onto the crankshaft. Be sure to put plenty of oil on that carbon. Taking the ceramic part of the seal, lubricate very well right on the seal surface there, not touching that surface as well, and set it down there. This installation tool is also the remover tool, which goes down and you'll feel that shaft, or that seal, drop into position as it hits the O-ring. Then take your snap ring, pair of snap ring pliers, feed it down into the nose. I have this little installation tool which allows me to push that snap ring down in there. When it gets down at the bottom, you push real hard and you'll feel it actually compress that spring section of that seal and the snap ring will go down or the ceramic will go down and the snap ring will pop into the slots. That is the original type two-piece seal. I'll pull this seal out. We're going to go ahead and remove that seal real quick using the, the proper tools. I'm going to show you how I like to reseal an A6. I've just pulled the snap ring back out. I've engaged the remover tool and pulled out the ceramic seat. And this will go down and engage the tabs of the carbon, and pull it out. The O-ring is still down in that nose section through here. We do not need to remove that. One of the best ways to get an A6 to quit slinging oil under the hood is to use the newer style GM double lip seal. This is the same one used in H series compressors and later R4s. You take your installation tool. Without this tool, you cannot get this seal in. You will tear it. Put plenty of lube on it and lubricate the seal itself. We're going to kind of stretch it to make installation easier. Take the seal, push it down over the installation tool. If you notice, that's actually backwards of how this should be installed, but it makes it easier to kind of stretch it. Next, we take the installation tool, set it over the crankshaft, the compressor. We now take our new seal, make sure we lubricate around the outer edges as well. A little more oil here, a little more oil up there. 
the center, the side where it bows out, is what goes down into the compressor. That is the face of it. That sticks out towards you. The side with the writing on it will be outwards. Set the seal over the tool. Work it down a little bit. So with the seal started down over the protector, you can use a socket. I'll just use this tool here. Hit to push, to, to hit the seal, push it down, and you'll feel it bottom out into the O-ring uh, in the compressor. I use these little plastic pusher tools or sockets, whatever fits the outside of that seal. Pull your protector off. Install your snap ring, bevel side towards you. Get started down there. Use a little pusher tool to knock it down until it hits the snap ring in the, into the groove. Double check, make sure that it is in the groove and cannot come blowing out. And this concludes our reseal of the General Motors A6 compressor. Uh, these seals are available as well as the installation tools on www.centuryautoair.com. Thank you.